thank you. Thank you for coming. The, and thanks to the Department of Performing Arts and the University of Winchester for this chance to be a visiting research fellow. And thank you for Millie, for, uh, Millie Taylor for sponsoring me. And thanks for, to the generous time allotment. I'm usually confined to 20 minutes in these sort of presentations, but tonight we have a little bit more. Because of that, uh, I'm going to divide my talk into three parts. Um, we'll have a short break with some stretching and then some questions about that particular section at each break, after each break. <clears throat> so all three parts of my talk this afternoon center on the singing of nonsense syllables. I'll give you some examples. And feel free to join in as you feel like it. For instance, it's nice to be pre presenting this talk at this time of year because it allows me to issue the timely imperative. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> Here we have nonsense syllables from deep in Europe's medieval past. What are some other songs with nonsense syllables, you may ask? You may think, oh, I don't know any. Well, here are some from the American musical. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. We go together like rama lama lama ka ding a ding a ding dong. Salagadula, mishagabula, bibbidi babbidi boo. Put them together and what have you got? Bibbidi babbidi boo. If I were a rich man, yada deedle 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 dum. So, and instances often come in pairs in a particular work. For instance, this pair from a 1959 show. High on a hill lived a lonely goat herd. Yay, odale, odale, hee <laughs> And of course, so do la fa mi do re so do la ti do re do so you've all sung nonsense syllables all your life it's fun it's easy it's lighthearted and it's going to lead us today in some very interesting directions and thus endeth the introduction let's move on to the first topic I've titled this talk, Another Broadway Sound. So what is the conventional Broadway sound that then defines what the other would be? Let's hear some examples. Most of my examples today are going to be audio only, including this one. <clears throat> and we will go to our desktop and get our list. The Broadway sound that I grew up with already almost out of date by the time I was born in 1961 is exemplified by these two singers from the original Broadway cast recording of Oklahoma in 1943, Alfred Drake and Joan Roberts singing this portion of People Will Say We're In Love. Right? Typical hero, hero and heroine sounds through the 1940s, 1950s, and even into the early to mid-1960s. The variation on the female sound labeled belting is, of course, exemplified by mezzo-soprano Ethel Merman. Um, here she is on a radio broadcast of one of her famous hits from the 1950, Call Me Madam. At age 40, her vibrato is already getting a little bit out of control. 
but the incredible use of the mask and, of course, the incredible diction marks her style. As I became more of an aficionado, uh, I delved into more recordings from the 19-teens and 1920s, um, such as this by the Astaire siblings, Adele and Fred. Here they are in 1928 uh, doing a song from their 1927 show, Funny Face, the title song accompanied by George Gershwin, the com song's uh, composer at the piano. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Adele. So the almost spoken, um, very pointed delivery of the song and dance man, the sweet piping, somewhat coy, somewhat slightly irreverent, slightly off pitch sound of the musical comedy Ingenue, Adele and Fred Astaire. But there were still other sounds of the American musical. And today I want to draw your attention to a personal favorite of mine, Cliff Edwards also known by his professional nickname throughout his long career as Ukulele Ike. His current place in pop culture is as one inspirational figure to the ukulele revival of the end of the 20th and beginning of the 21st centuries, um, and as the voice of Jiminy Cricket for two decades, um, particularly in his iconic recording of When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio. <laughs> So the, um, this is one of the sounds of the first generation of microphone singers, of crooners, of which Edwards is one of the pioneers. High in pitch, slightly quavering, slightly broken and vulnerable, yet hopeful, soft in volume, soothing. But this was only one of the many modes of vocal delivery for Cliff Edwards, as we soon shall see, or rather hear. From 1921 to 1936, Edwards appeared in three Broadway reviews and two landmark musical comedy hits. One was the 1924 Lady Be Good, the predecessor uh, of, of Funny Face as a show starring Fred and Adele Astaire with a score by George Gershwin and his brother Ira Gershwin in lyrics. Another of Cliff Edwards' starring vehicles was the 1925 Sunny, which was the first collaboration of Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II. With the advent of talking pictures in 1929, Edwards appeared as a supporting player in many movies, singing in 18 movie musicals, semi-musicals and single songs and comedies, plus singing as a comic sidekick in 17 of what were called singing cowboy westerns, a low-budget genre that was a favorite of rural audiences and children's audiences. He was also in five musical short films. So he's quite prolific in the film musical genre. And there was, of course, also his famous voice work for Disney as Jiminy Cricket in 1940's Pinocchio and 1947's Fun and Fancy Free, and then later on in television and on recordings, and as a crow in 1941's Dumbo. Um, throughout the 1950s, the Disney company continued to hire him for voice work for television and recordings during his declining years. Turn our attention to the 1924 show Lady Be Good on Broadway, which was Edwards' second Broadway show, um, is considered to be of special importance. Historians sometimes hail it as the show that introduced jazz to the Broadway musical comedy. As usual, this is an oversimplification, yet there are some ways it deserves at least some credit for its jazziness. Too powerfully enduring, 
jazz standards were introduced in it. Fascinating rhythm, you got me on the go. Fascinating rhythm, I'm on the quiver. And oh, sweet and lovely, lady be good. So beloved of bebop instrumentalists of later decades. Um, other songs in it included the bluesy, I've got the you don't know the half of it, dearie blues. And the duet, if you hang on to me, then I'll hang on to you. We'll dance out of the sunshine, out of the, into the sunshine, out of the rain, forever and a day, in which that little quote, da 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 da, is a quote from the St. Louis Blues. Further, the show featured Cliff Edwards as the bellboy Jeff. Uh, in Act 1, he introduced a uh, fascinating rhythm alongside the Astaires, and in Act 2, he had his solo specialty spot. In 1, before the curtain, um, just him and his ukulele, in which, he, in which he introduced a song especially written for him by the Gershwin brothers. It's still a cabaret favorite. I'm a little jazz bird, and I'm telling you to be one too. Cause a little jazz bird is in heaven when he's singing blue. Will Friedwald, who is one of the most famous writers today on jazz singing, has been a strong champion of Cliff Edwards' work. In his book, Jazz Singing, he goes on record as stating, thanks to Bessie Smith and Cliff Edwards, jazz singing was a worthwhile, valid, and in many ways complete art as early as 1926. Edwards is one candidate as the earliest recording artist to scat, in other words, to do wordless singing that emulates jazz instrumental styles. And um, is there anybody here who is not familiar with, say, Louis Armstrong's scat singing? Um, good. I'm glad um, that you all uh, have that in your oral memory. So here's Cliff Edwards um, in his studio recording of a uh, pop song. There's a big hit for him on record um, that he featured in his specialty spot in Oh Lady Be Good, um, Red Hot Mama. <clears throat> We're just going to hear an excerpt of in the middle. Yes, that's his voice. Hollywood captured him on film quite a bit, singing in this style, as well as his other styles. Here's an excerpt from a 1933 short. <laughs> <laughs> so, Edward's first recording examples of this kind of singing predate those of the more famed example of Louis Armstrong by five years. Early jazz is linked with novel timbral effects of groups like the original Dixieland jazz bands with their recordings like Barnyard Blues in which they imitated the cry of animals. They're the first jazz recording uh, in 1917. And obviously, Edwards' work fits into this early jazz model of melodic variation, rhythmic feel, and timbral experimentation. Edwards recorded a lot over many decades, and the re recordings reveal that his wordless singing was varied and creative. He hummed. He sang nonsense syllables in a style vaguely similar to Louis Armstrong's. He imitated stringed instruments, such as the plucked string bass. And he, the way the, the Mills brothers also did in the early 30s, if you're familiar with their work. Um, but especially Edwards concentrated on a sound close to that of a brass horn, um, especially a cornet or trumpet. With growls, slurs, and other devices, Edwards, in this part of his art, was a hot jazz musician. So Edwards exemplifies 
how the Broadway stage encompassed and embraced what we would call other Broadway sounds. Now, I know you're all dying to try this. So, we're all going to... Uh, I know that you all know When the Saints Go Marching In, the theme song of the Southampton Football Club. Um, so, the first thing is to get the sense of that nasality, right? Right in the mask. So, everybody, try, try that. Come on. All right, all right. Um, so, uh, so, so now try it with one of the saints. Come on. Excellent. <laughs> all right, let's move on.